Hey everybody, let's take a look at the multiplying radicals. We have two parts to 84. And uh, let's take a look at old stuff first. Look on the left. And let's go through these answers together. And just to kind of warm up ourselves here. So it's square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Answer is the square root of 23. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, it's the square root of 6. All right. All right. The square root of 7 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 75. No, okay. All right, 35. Right, the square root of 28, don't forget what we can do with that when we break it down, right? There is no integer answer to that, right? The square root of 28 is not like, oh, it's 5. It's between 5 and 6, but it's not either one of those. What we do is we break this down into factors, and we see that it's 4 times 7. We look at the 4, and we say, ah, the, the square root of 4 is 2. So that comes out here, and we write, write our final answer looking like this, okay? All right, look at this one. What is 2a times 3b? Yeah, the numbers together is going to be 6. Again, the a times b is ab. There you go. Okay. Well, if you can do that, 2a times 3b is 6ab, then you can do this. It's the same thing. Just substitute this for, you know, the a or this for the b or whatever. Okay. Here's something weird. Well, let's do this first. Let's prove that it works. Okay. Let's go down. By the way, what is the square root of 9? It's 3, right? So what's 2 times 3? 6, okay? Times, what is the square root of 4? 2, right? 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so the answer to this is 6 times 6, or 36. We know that, okay? Another way to look at that one on the right, which is kind of neat how this works, is that you can go, okay, I'm just going to multiply the 2 by the 3. Okay, by the way, we know the answer is 36. We did that already. Okay, I'll multiply the 2 by the 3, just like we did right here, right? The 2 by the 3. 2 times 3 is 6, right? Then, just like we said, A times B is AB. We got it. We can do exactly the same thing here. The square root of 9 times the square root of 4 is the square root of 36, right? Okay, well, we know what the square root of 36 is, right? It's 6. So 6 times 6 is our answer, 36, which is just what we got here that proves that this method works to get the right answer. Okay, we're going to use that now to do something like this. And again, you just treat this just like you would, like a 4x times 3y or whatever. So take a sec, copy that now if you need to. Okay. All we need to do is take this number and that number and multiply it and get 12. And then take this number and that number and multiply it and get the square root of 6. And that is it. That's all we need. All right. They do get slightly more interesting. We'll do one in a second here, which is this one. Okay. All right, 4 squared of 3 times 6 squared of 6. Okay, we're going to go 4 times 6, which is 24. Then we do 3 times 6 for the square root. That gives us the square of 18. You don't stop there, though. Look at that number under the radical and make sure you can't break it down. This time we can. Okay, we can break down this to 24 times 9 times 2. 24 times the square root of 9 times 2. We know the square root of 9 is 3, so that comes out here, becomes a 3. This goes away. We just have the square root of 2 underneath the radical. Outside the radical, we have 24 times 3. 20 times 3 is 60. 4 times 3 is 12. 60 plus 12, 72. That is our answer, simplified. Okay, let's look at 3. Ooh, take a second and pause if you need to. Copy this. Now, my question to you is, if this were 4x times 5, I don't know, y plus 6z, could you do this problem if it were in your math book? Of course you could, yeah. You would just ask your older brother to do it for you. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's the same thing. You're just going to do the same thing. So you're taking this, you're distributing that to this, and then to that one. So let's do this one first. All right? 4 times 5, 20. 3 times 2 under the radical, 6. Done. All right? 4 times 6, 24. Okay? 3 times 3, the square root of 9 is just 3, right? All right. Nothing we can do with this to break it down, so we just copy it again. 20 square root of 6 plus 24 times 3 is 72. There we go. That's all we have. There we go. All right. Okay, this one last one. Copy that one. Give it a whirl. See what you get. Pause it and give it a shot. Okay, we'll do the 4 times the 3. That's going to be 12. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2, right? The square root of 4 is 2. All right, done. Okay, 4 times the square root of 2 times, well, there's nothing, there's no radical at the end here to, to piddle with. 
So you just take the 4 and the 5 and multiply that and get the square root of 2 there. And of course, we can just go ahead and do 24 and then plus 20, the square root of 2. There we go. All those to that. Okay. All right. The second half of this is just kind of a review and a rewording of functions. Remember what a function is, right? It's like, here you are, you're a babysitter. Uh, this is your setup. The lady says to you, okay, I'll pay you $5 just for showing up because the moms are so desperate to socialize their children with watered down Kool-Aid and graham crackers. They fling at each other, okay? Here's $5. See you in an hour. You get $2 per kid, right? Okay, and don't forget this is a function because if you stick in something for X, how many answers are you gonna get for Y, for the amount of money you make? In other words, if you put in a certain number of kids, eight kids show up, is there any doubt in the world to you how much money you're gonna make? No, you're gonna go two times eight is 16, plus five, $21. Hey lady, I did eight kids, I want $21. Bam, there's no question. There's only one answer you're getting, okay? A function machine, there's a representation of what a function is. You stick, you know, if this is your function right here. In other words, if this is your, you know, y equals, or you could say f of x, remember that? Anytime you see f of x, just stick a y in it. The lady goes, I'll give you $5 just for showing up. And for every kid that shows up, I'll give you that many kids, you know, that many, uh, I'll, well, I'll square it. Okay, we'll do right there. Boom. So, okay. Hey, man, uh, lady, two kids showed up. They did? Okay. Well, let's see. Two squared would be four. Four dollars. Oh, ma'am, don't forget, you said you'd give me five dollars. Oh, yeah. Four plus five dollars, nine dollars. There it is. There you go. Okay, let's see. Four kids showed up. Okay, well... Uh, four kids showed up, four squared is 16, plus five, $21, here you go. Hey lady, seven kids showed up. All right, let's see here. Seven squared is 49 plus five, 54, boom. A function means you, you, have a, you stick a value in for X, you get one answer for Y, that's what a function is. That's all. It's just like going to work. Let's say you work for Chick-fil-A or something, right? The guy tells you, okay, you work, uh, you know, we're paying you ten dollars an hour. You work twelve hours this week. There, there isn't any question how much money you're gonna make. It's ten times twelve, right? That's it, one hundred twenty dollars minus a little bit of taxes. So you take home thirty dollars total. Okay. Welcome to the adult world. All right. Look at these. Look at these uh, uh, visuals. I guess of functions. Okay. Let's look at this first. Don't forget what domain and range are. Domain matches up with x. Range matches up with y. Alphabetical. Domain is what you plug in, range is what you get, all right? Do, is this a function? Well, let's see. Um, let's see, you plug in a value for four and you get a three. If you plug in the value for two, you get a three. That's a function. Even though they're the same one, you still have to plug in your you know, function machine. I plug in a four, I only got one answer. I plugged in a two, I only got one answer. Obviously, we're talking about two different babysitting situations here, right? One was one week and one was the other week or whatever. Okay, you get, well, I babysat four kids, I get $3. Oh yeah, I did it a week later. I babysat two kids, I get $3. That was just a different payment system. But it's still, you plug in a number for X, you get an uh, answer for Y, one answer. Okay, look at this one. All right. Let's say you did four kids, you got $3. You babysat two kids, you got $5, you babysat one kid, you got six, I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like a fair situation, but in each case, you stick in one number and you still get only one answer. That's a re representation of getting, you stick an answer in for X, you get one answer for Y, that's a function. Look at the bottom two. This is a relation called a relation. All right, circle that one, okay? You stick in a number for four, uh-oh, I babysat four kids. The lady goes, well, you could make $3 or $5. You go, what in the world? You know, okay, so that does not tell you a clear-cut answer. In other words, you don't put something in, you get a guaranteed one answer, not a function. Everything does have something that matches up with it. So there is each, each element does have a related number. So they, they call that a relation, all right? This, not a relation. That's, that's, not, even, that's not a function or a relation. If you're looking at this. Oh, I babysat four kids. I got three dollars. Oh, I babysat two kids. I got one dollar or five dollars. Babysat one kid. I 
you know, got launched into outer space because nothing happened. Okay, there's nothing, you, you get, there's no matchup here. So not a function. In fact, it's not even, it's not even a relation because there's nothing that even matches with one at all. Okay, those are visuals if you're a visual learner. We have nasal things on the next page if you're a nasal learner. We don't have any nasal things. Okay, all right. All right, question, does that designate a function? Is everything on the left, the domain, the X, have one result for the Y? Yeah, it does. So that, that is a function. Everything you, t you, you put in gives you one answer, boom, function. Okay, is that a function? Well, the Y only gives you one answer. The A only gives you one answer. The M, uh-oh, gives you two answers. Okay, not a function. A function, you put a number in, you only get one answer. Okay, is this a function? Let's just try it. Okay, you put in an answer for A, you get one answer. You put in an answer for 4, you get one answer. You put an answer for something for a 7, and you get one answer. Yeah, that is a function. Don't let this confuse you that they're both pointing to 5. All you need to do is look at the domain. If I stick in some number for a domain, do I get one answer for the, my range? The answer is yes, that is a function. Okay. Is this a function? In other words, you can use any, any number you want to, any real number, okay? This is a babysitting example. You, can, you know that babysitting example, right? How much money do you get for just for showing up in this babysitting example? Two dollars, right? Okay, how much do you make per kid who shows up? If there's nothing in front of the X, it's a one, right? Okay, is there any question if you babysat 20 kids, if the, if the X were 20, is there any, any question about how many dollars you're going to make? No, right? 1 times 20 is 20, plus 2, 22. If I got 20 kids, I need $22. She's not going to say, wait, the possibilities are... No, there's one possibility, okay? No matter what you put in there for that X value, you're going to get one single answer every single time. That is a function, all right? Okay, let's look at these. Either of these sets of order pairs... Designate a function. All right, let's look at one at a time. Let's look at this one here. Forget B. Is this a function? In other words, don't forget, we're talking about domain and range, or if you want to say X and Y. Domain, range, X and Y. Domain, range, X and, can you guess what this last one is? Y. That's right. You're sharp today. Okay. Well, look at this thing. I plug in a 4, I get a 6. I plug in a 7, I get a 2. I plug in a 4, I... Oops. We plugged in a 4 and got a 6. Then we plug in a 4 and got a 5. No, not a function. Because in a function, you have one number you plug in. You only get one answer when you plug that number in. No, not a function. Out of the family. Okay, B, is this a function? Yes, okay, you plug in a four, you get an eight. Plug in a 15, get a six, 11, get a seven, boom, that's all. Yeah, that's a function. Each one of those matches with one domain, matches with one range, okay? All right, look at A. Is A a function? And it might look a little confusing, but again, try them all out. How many answers do you get for one? You just get a two here. How many answers do you get for two if you plug it in? You just get that one. How many answers do you get for three? Just that one. How many answers do you get for Yes, that's a function, okay? Is B a function? Okay, I'll give you a clue. The answer is... That's right. Not. Nah. No, that's not a function because you get, you know, one answer for two, you get one answer for four, but you get two answers for one. You plug in a one, you get a two. Then you plug in a one, you get a three, not a function, okay? Is this a function? This is a little weird. What's, what's different about this one? Look at those fours, right? Okay. Now, I know there are two of them, but still it's true that if you plug in a four, you get a three. You, you still only get one answer. So that's okay, that is a function, even though there are two of them. Last one, what's confusing about D? 
you know, what's confusing about D is, look, there's negative one, there's negative one, and there's negative one. So you might think, oh no, there's a bunch of them that's not a function. But remember, all a function needs is you stick something, you have something for X, you only get one answer for Y. Well, if you have a one, how many answers do you have for, for the X if the X is one? You only have that one, right? That works so far. How many answers do you have for four? Just one, right? How many answers do you have when you plug in negative one? One answer. How many answers do you have to plug when you plug in three? One. So yes, that's a function, even though these are matching on the very end. Okay, All right. Does this designate a function or does it designate a relation? Okay, it's not a function, right? Because why? Because six has two answers, right? Function means you plug in something for six, you get one answer for uh, six, and that's it. But on this one, you get two answers, okay? Not a function, okay? Is this a function or a relation? Well, that matches, that matches, and uh, not even a relation, right? Because five matches with nothing, so you're out of luck on that one, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the practice problems, and so pause it and try the first one. Okay, first one is going to give you 20 times the square root of 36, and the square root of 36 is 6, so 20 times 6 is 120. Okay, try B. Pause it and try B. All right, B will give you 12 square root of 6, that's the first one, plus 15 square root of 12. Now look at this. This breaks up, right? This stays the same. This, however, will be the square root of 12, in other words, 15 times the square root of 12 is 15 times 4 times 3. This, square root of 4, is 2. So 15 times 2 is 30, and you have just the square root of 3 underneath there. You leave it like that. Okay. All right, try C. Pause it. Okay, the domain uh, for this one. Uh, excuse me, C is a function, my bad. Each one of those goes to one number. So if the A goes to the five, the six goes to the 11, the seven goes to the 11, doesn't matter that they have the same range, each one has one result when you plug it in. Okay, try D, pause it and try D. Okay, not a function because Y has two answers. A function only has one answer, all right? Pause it and try E. All right, C is A, 6, and 7. The numbers you are allowed to use, that's the X, that's the domain, are A, 6, and 7. Okay, pause it and try F. All right, the range in F would be P and A and 7. Range is the same thing as the result. If you want to think of R, range, result, P, A, and 7. Pause it and try G. Okay. The second one and the fourth one are functions. The other two are not functions because one of those uh, ordered pairs gives you more than one answer. If you put it in X, you get more than one answer for the Y. Okay, see you guys next time. Take care.